us a Will Hardesty, ladies and gentlemen, give it up there, round of applause. The lovely Will Hardesty. Okay, that's enough. Folks in the front, how you doing? This is like a Last Supper gone bad or some shit in the front through here. How you doing in here dressed like a personal injury attorney or some shit? Everybody knows that fucker's a service manager at a Toyota dealership, ain't you, sir? And this might be the worst toupee I've ever seen in my life right there, sir. Have to get my size pearl and get your money back on that one. I'm wanting to talk about hair. I got 12 hanging on here. If I ever get to heaven, I'm gonna find the hair angel and whip his ass. How you doing, sir? Dress up, make the rest of us look like shit. Thanks a lot, sir. You always depend on the old fucker to overdo it every time. Big ass guy in the front. How you doing? Fight breaks out, you're on my team, sir. Like the shirt, well, you shot your mattress for that one, didn't you? See, a lot of you people really don't even understand my job. Don't make my job's coming here and tell you a bunch of jokes and make you laugh. That has absolutely nothing to do with my job. You know what my job is? To be a bigger dick than you are and you are and you are. That way on the way home, I'm glad I'm not hooked up that hillbilly son of a bitch. You might run around dressed like a personal injury attorney, but you're not as bad as that fucker. Then you'll get laid later, sir. And you'll see my name on that sign out there in about six months ago. I got laid last time I saw that asshole. And that is my job. So. How you doing? Just trying to get a handle on the crowd. When's your Vaseline gonna dry out up there, sir? Don't you hate him? Good hair, asshole. Don't you hate him? How you doing? You ain't from Iraq or anything, are you? I don't need to, like, start the car or anything, do I? Just checking. Just playing with you, sir. Trying to get you laid later. Three in the morning, you're gonna be going, Hillbilly was right. <laughs> She's gonna be going, you are, you don't even look Iraqi. It's okay, honey. How you doing? It's good to have the governor with us tonight, Sonny Perdue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the governor of the great state of Georgia. Ma'am Reba is gonna need that outfit back as soon as you can get it to her. Jeez. Dress up, make the rest of us look like shit. I ain't seen this much cleavage since I spent Easter with Ted Kennedy, sir. You're killing me over there, sir. Got the hat on backwards. Let's turn it around, sir. Let's be a pitcher, not a catcher. What do you say? Everywhere you go, there's some white kid trying to act like a black guy all the time. Sorry to the black people in the back. It's just a joke. Calm down. <laughs> It's very rare that I get a lot of black audience at my show, being a hillbilly, so. I guess we must have passed out coupons or some shit. <laughs> there ain't no way in hell a table full of black people gonna pay $20 a lick to listen to hillbilly bullshit. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> How you doing, ma'am? This is it. I don't dance. This is it. <laughs> if I'd have known you weren't gonna crack a fucking smile, you wouldn't be in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Just play with you, man. How you doing? Well, everybody's old as hell in here. How old are you, sir? 26. 26. Don't know shit. You're in here looking for a cosigner right now, ain't you, sir? 26. Hell, I got underwear. 26. Probably on. <laughs> How old are you, sir? 72. Damn. You look good, sir. I'm 44, hell, I look 54, sounds 64. So. <laughs> Me and him used to do a thing called go outside and fucking play. <laughs> it was a weird thing. <laughs> you lived in a house and there was a road in front of your house you could actually cross without a booster seat or an eggshell bicycle fucking helmet. <laughs> and there were people who lived in that house who actually knew you. And you'd knock on the door and go outside and play with their kid till it got dark with a thing called a stick. <laughs> and then your mama'd come to the door and say, it's time for a thing that we used to call dinner. That was back when women would do a thing called cook. <laughs> and there'd be like four or five pots on the stove. Wasn't just some lasagna they were proud of from the Publix or some shit. <laughs> We used to ride our bikes to the damn store by our damn selves. Be six, seven, eight miles away from home. Parents didn't give a damn. Where are them kids at? Hell, I don't know. Glad they're gone. Be nine years old. Going to get you a carton of Marlboro 100s. Red man chewing tobacco. 
penthouse forum magazine. And they got the story, you boys need some lighters with them cigarettes. <laughs> Say, no, we got daddy's lighter. Well, you better change clothes before you get home. They'll smell smoke. You'll get a thing that we used to call an ass weapon. That was, that was something they quit issuing about 26 fucking years ago, sir. <laughs> Anyhow, them is hot in here. Might want to turn these french fry lights up just a tad here. Wait on the damn bell to go off up here. About hotter than a four ball monkey up here about now. So I can sweat in your drink from here, ma'am. <laughs> Get a margarita, you won't taste it. <laughs> Just play it with you, ma'am. She's got one of them high maintenance girls, sir. You gotta watch them high maintenance women. High maintenance women are never ever after a maintenance man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're rolling now, ain't we? You sucked early, but you're coming around. Starting to like it. Forgot what I was talking about. Oh, 26, don't know shit. That's what I was talking about. We didn't have them bicycles like you little assholes had. Flip around, flying, going over a cliff, upside down, all that bullshit. We had to hold on with two big toes on a lug nut, didn't we, sir? Had a sissy bar, a banana seat, easy rider Hannah bars. You go flipping that damn thing around, you get a scrotum sack on your reflector. <laughs> well, can we smoke this show? This ain't a no smoker show, is it? I hate a damn no smoking show. Half the crowd wants to smoke, and they can't, so they're pissed, and the other half, they got no sense of humor to start with. <laughs> Everybody's down on tobacco. The greatest four minds of World War II smoked. Roosevelt smoked, Churchill smoked, Eisenhower smoked, Douglas MacArthur smoked. Nicotine won World War II. Yeah. Then we started smoking reefer in Vietnam, got our ass wet in that war. But, <laughs> but we won this last one though, because we're smoking crack now. Which means we're gonna rape, rob, pillage, steal, shoot, plunder, and steal stereos better than we ever have. We may not whoop Bin Laden, but he won't have shit to listen to when it's over. <laughs> They pulled Hussein out of that hole with a big long beard. I went, damn, I didn't realize the Oak Ridge boys were playing in Iraq. <laughs> Giddy up, oh, shuck, oh, shuck, a mouth. <laughs> Little fucker don't know who the Oak Ridge boys are, do you, sir? <laughs> Did they open for Incubus? <laughs> My ass is Incubus. <laughs> Everybody wonders why these terrorists get such a shitty attitude. Because their music sucks, that's why. Enough may want to cut your wrist, strap on dynamite, drive into an embassy somewhere in this air. I'd have a shitty attitude too if my dates were all dressed like ninjas. Is that your girlfriend or mine, Rashid? I cannot tell, Mr. Team. He's Arabic guys, just a hair insecure with the women. Got them wrapped up in shower curtains and shit. We shouldn't bomb them, we ought to send a big wave of Hooter girls over there, that's what we ought to do. Do some hardcore psychological warfare on their ass. Be burning up in the desert. Here comes little Tiffany in orange shorts going, you want some more chicken wing? <laughs> I don't want to sit here and pick on Hooter girls. Lord knows I'm practically the CEO of that corporation at this point. Don't ever marry a damn Hooter girl. Silicone and good food are rarely in the same building. <laughs> you marry a hooter girl, you're gonna wind up eating hot pockets the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> hot pockets! <laughs> Some woman ever cooked me a hot pocket, she can pack her shit in a hot pocket and get the fuck out. <laughs> and take those orange shorts with you. <laughs> I knew the Taliban was full of shit. First time I'd ever seen flies at a press conference. When the president of your country, he's got a damn fly on his forehead on TV. <laughs> Why is it everybody hates freedom, apparently hates indoor plumbing, too? You ever notice that? <laughs> I smell Democrats in this room. <laughs> John Kerry was in the military. Fuck Lee Harvey Oswald was in the military. <laughs> Benedict Arnold was in the military. My cousin was in Vietnam. Hell, he's framing houses in North Georgia. I don't want that asshole being president. <laughs> he might make a pretty good FEMA director. 
Well, because he's always a week late and knows a lot about horses. So. <laughs> I guess the FEMA people did kind of drop the ball. The only FEMA I saw was Kafima Jackson. She was holding a big armload of huggies going, where are those motherfuckers? <laughs> no, I'm just kind of playing. It's really hard for me to feel sorry for the people in Mississippi that lost their house because I almost lost my house in Mississippi at a blackjack table in Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> And they didn't give a fuck when that happened, so. I didn't see any Red Cross truck at the interstate exit with a $2,000 credit card waiting on my ass when I, when I limped out of town. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm not even a Republican. Hell, I'm kind of a libertarian. Leave my money alone and do all the heroin you want to do. Good luck with it. Now, who ever said a math lab ain't a small business? <laughs> See, I remember in Georgia when gambling used to be a sin. Then it started financing schools, suddenly it's okay. <laughs> so I guess the math lab people could probably build a chemistry department at Tech. <laughs> and all of a sudden it'd be okay to be a math lab guy in Georgia. You'd have Sonny Purdue over here going, we'd like to thank the Georgia Math Lab Association. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. I don't quite understand the meth lab, you know? If I ever become a drug addict, I'm going with Turkish heroin, you know? I don't really want my high to depend on some fucker named Skeeter, you know, with a, with a paint thinner can and coming, you know? <laughs> Democrats, got rid of assault weapons. We don't need assault weapons hunting. Well, you've obviously never been trapped in the woods with eight of my cousins drunk shooting at your ass. <laughs> you need extra firepower when you're out there. When you're spotlighting for that herd of deer, damn it, you need a 50 clip. Everybody's down on assault weapons. Let's be honest. When two bullets hit you, it don't really matter if 48 come after it. You know what I mean? Your mind's kind of on them first two. That's what I despise about the government in this damn country. Every time somebody gets killed, oh, we gotta pass a law to stop it. Well, we do have a law to stop it. It's called murder. <laughs> Columbine in Colorado, those two little fuckheads had shotguns. Now Democrats are getting shotguns. We gotta get rid of shotguns now. I can go to Home Depot, get a 16 penny nail gun with an air compressor. <laughs> Pull the safety back on that thing with a claw hammer and keep you out of my yard for about two and a half hours. <laughs> no background check. And no urine sample. <laughs> but I'll guarantee them to you pretty soon some little 14-year-old kid's gonna get a hold of a pass-load fuel-injected nail gun. His little girlfriend's gonna break up with his ass. He's gonna open fire on a Bible class with a bunch of finishing nails somewhere. <laughs> and a bunch of damn Democrats will be against the fucking nail gun. <laughs> the nail gun, <laughs> it's killing our children. <laughs> Jonesboro, Arkansas had those little dip shits in the woods shooting at the girls at the school. And then some other school passes a law. You can't wear camouflage t-shirts to school. Yeah, well that's gonna fix it. If camouflage was a school uniform, the little fuckers in the woods would have a hard time finding their ass next time. I think they ought to pass a law. 13 year old girls can't break up with their boyfriends until the end of the school year. That's what I say. If you profess to like him in September, you're going to the prom with that motherfucker in May. <laughs> and I'll be running for education secretary 2008. Need your vote. <laughs> See these politicians, especially Southerners. Oh, we need more money for math in our school. <laughs> no, we don't. We need chalk. <laughs> Same thing taught everybody in here, math. Up that little fucker right over there. <laughs> he was in the positive outcome class or some bullshit. Ooh, our blackboard was white with a magic marker. Here, Skipper, take the computer mouse, click solve. I can teach math with a stick and the damn dirt. <laughs> What's wrong with the American school? Maybe the American ass weapon's missing, ma'am. Maybe that's it. My daddy was the assistant principal of a junior high school for 25 years. I got my ass beat by a professional. 
He dropped a dime on the ground. Reach over to pick it up. Boom! Tag you. To this day, every time I see Roosevelt's face, I want to grab my ankles. <laughs> Corporal punishment, oh, it creates inner turmoil in the child. Oh, it's a negative response. Oh. Yeah, my daddy whooped the preacher and three of the pallbearers at his funeral. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> they won't let kids pray in school. Then they wonder why test scores are going down. You ever notice the people who are against guns are usually the people that ought to be shot? <laughs> yeah. Hell, well. See, I can tell I'm in Georgia now. <laughs> Baptist in the crowd? Well, drink up. Don't matter what they dunk you in, long as you go under. Unlike the Catholics, no matter what the fuck you do, as long as you tell somebody. <laughs> Catholics in the crowd? Well, there's your problem. <laughs> well, I hope you had a nice Christmas and Hanukkah if you're Jewish and hope you had a nice average week for all you atheists. Because I know we've got to respect your right to burn in hell. <laughs> I'm basically just sick of white people. Don't get up to here with white people. Work on a house about two years. Do an addition on the front of your house. Watch white guys come over disguised as construction people. When it's over, you'll despise white people. We talk a good game. Oh, you must not have called us. Hell, I did call you. I called white ass plumber. Looked you up in the yellow pages under W, white ass plumber. Try to get a white guy on the phone. Could I speak to somebody that remotely knows anything about anything? I'm sorry, he's not here right now. But if you leave your name and number, I can get him on his beeper. He's still at work. I go, ma'am, it's 11.30 at night. That fucker's on a cell phone getting a lap dance somewhere, ma'am. <laughs> White guy, got a beeper and a cell phone. He'll drive around in a company truck lining up jobs. I go, we're covered up. Shit, we about got all we can do. <laughs> I can't believe I'm over here looking at this right now. Damn, we'll lose money on that. We are covered up. We go, yeah, you're covered up in Taco Bell wrappers. That's what you're covered up in. When's the last time you seriously saw a white guy with a hammer in his hand out sweating somewhere? When's the last time you broke a sweat, sir? Six months. Don't sit here and bullshit me, sir. Who actually does the majority of the construction work in the United States of America? Let's all say it together. The Mexican guys. That's who actually does the damn work. You want anything done right at your house, you get a Mexican man to show up at your house. He won't show up, you gotta go pick him up. <laughs> but he's waiting on your ass out there. Him and 200 friends of his hiding behind a grocery store somewhere, begging to go to damn work. And there's always some white ass cop with a crew cut and a flat jacket. What the hell is going on with your damn border patrol? He'll drive right by a white guy with a cardboard sign and says, I won't do shit. Please give me a dollar. <laughs> oh, well, he's a citizen. White guy. Got his name on the side of a truck. Painted real pretty. Got him a logo on his shirt to match his truck. Got some cards. He's bonded. He's got a web page. He tell you what he can't do. <laughs> now that right there now. Now I just don't know about that right there now. <laughs> You get a Mexican man working for you, you look at him and you go. And he goes. And the shit gets done, he's gone. White guy wants to tell you a long story. Now I know the contract said we'd be finished on Saturday. But my little boy, my doll stars, have got a ball game Wednesday night. If they win that game, we may not finish for six months. Mexican man wants three things. Sub sandwich all the way, a large coat, when I think you want this fucking hole. <laughs> think about it, name me one thing, thousands of years old, still standing that a white guy ever built. <laughs> the Colosseum in Rome, sir? The Roman Colosseum? 
We got a couple of problems, sir. First off, slave labor built the Coliseum, sir. I'm sure a lot of Italians stood out there and went, they're doing a good fucking job on that fucking Coliseum, Polly. I ain't never seen a fucking Coliseum out of fucking land come out of fucking ground. You're fucking A, Joey. B, sir, I'm not sure that fucker's technically still standing. And three, sir, you're going under the impression that I think Italian people are white. <laughs> Calm down, sir, my manager's Italian. I just threw that in there for him. Somebody said it over here. Stonehenge, God bless you, sir. 12 rocks standing up, six in between. And to this day, don't know what the fuck it's for. <laughs> Never saw a white guy at a pyramid. Why? Because it had to be exact. See a white guy at a pyramid. Hell, them rocks look close enough. Shit, we'll caulk it. <laughs> Let's get some lunch. I actually think Stonehenge was a couple of white boys taking a shot at a pyramid. <laughs> Got about 12 rocks drug up there. Fuck it, let's build some kind of temple or something. If we had some Mexicans here, we'd get a roof on this damn thing. I bet it turns out it was a concession stand at a fucked up racetrack or some shit. NASCAR fans in here, though? Perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's time to go to Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol, you damn right, we're going down Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol, you damn right, I'm going down Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol, you damn right, I'm going down Bristol. Wednesday night, they're getting pimento cheese sandwiches together. Turkey sandwiches, bologna sandwiches, tuna sandwiches. Buying a damn sausage, damn sandwiches. Get six cases of beer, make sure you get three bags of ice. They're traveling Thursday, get set up Thursday night, qualifying's Friday, bush race is Saturday, real race is Sunday, it rains, oh fuck, we're staying on Monday. <laughs> Takes Tuesday to get home, then Wednesday, you gotta get ready to go to damn Talladega. <laughs> That's one week, 250,000 white fuckers didn't do shit. <laughs> and the next time you go to Bristol, if you see a Mexican sitting next to you, I'll give you five dollars. <laughs> They're taking our jobs. No, they're not. They just don't give a fuck about Greg Biffle. <laughs> and neither do you, do you, ma'am? I can just tell by looking at her, sir. You'd have to drag her to Talladega. She'd be like, I don't want to go here. I want to go back to the junior league party. <laughs> just play with you, ma'am. I'll admit it in public. Damn it, I'm a Bee Gees fan. There, I said it. You know you're secure in your masculinity when you can blow into a rest area at two in the morning with staying alive blowing out your driver's side window. <laughs> Knowing good and well George Michael is waiting on your ass in the men's room there. <laughs> Humming Fanny be tender with my love. Remember that song, sir? Fanny be tender with my love, BGs? I don't know. 1976. <laughs> Top 12 record. He went for, I was born in 79. I was born in <laughs> I was born in 79, I wasn't born yet. <laughs> Nothing happened till I was born. <laughs> Nothing good happened since you were born. <laughs> we used to ride around on 32 cent gasoline. You get here and the shit's $3. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. I don't remember Abe Lincoln, but I read a fucking book. Come on, sir. <laughs> Hound Dog was a hit before I was born, but I can hum the damn thing. You better get a Bee Gees album. You married yet? Yeah. You better get a Barry White album. <laughs> if you're going to a marriage counselor, if a Barry White album won't fix it, fuck, it ain't fixable. <laughs> You'll get pregnant listening to a Barry White album. They ought to put condoms in the CD box on them damn things. I never seriously thought about sleeping with a roast beef sandwich until I heard Barry White do the Arby's commercial. Oh, look at that cheese going down on that roast beef. Oh, baby. Just love Barry White. You better get with the program back there. You better get a Marvin Gaye box set. Can't get laid to Marvin Gaye, you are gay. 
I know you're not gay. No gay guy would have a dog hat on backwards with that shirt. So, ma'am, this isn't some sort of hostage situation or anything, is it? You're here on your own free will right now, aren't you, ma'am? You weren't trying to get into the Best Buy and a dark van pulled up or something. Just checking. Is this the only asshole called you tonight, ma'am? We have got to get you a caller ID box, man. Just playing with you, sir. Trying to get you laid later. Alrighty. Let me explain something to you, sir. Me and him and him and him. We grew up in cars with no air conditioning. Our entire childhood was spent with our ass melted to a vinyl seat. <laughs> and every once in a while, your daddy'd have mercy on you and open those triangle windows a little bit just to, to let, a little, let a little air stir in there. We had one speaker and a steel dashboard and it didn't go. It went That's why Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash was a hit, sir. We all thought that song sucked, but we were relating to it because our ass was on fire. Every kid in the neighborhood would pile into the back of a thing called a station fucking wagon. No seat belts. Hell, nobody gave a damn about kids. My granddaddy wasn't even a needed kids. He was a farmer and needed the help. That's the reason I'm here. Nobody cared about kids. Then the Mexican guys started showing up, getting the work done, and everybody started worrying about the damn kid. I never knew what a seat belt was. I always thought it was a gum and hair holder. Never knew we even had one in the car until somebody dropped a quarter and you're down there looking for it. And, you know, what the hell's this? You know, what? So, what? Where does that go to? We're all piled in the back of a damn station wagon. The good thing about a station wagon was if you broke down in Alaska, you always had enough wood on the side to keep yourself warm. <laughs> start a fire on the interstate. Or you were that kid laying in the window of a car. You know, looking at the trooper going, do your horn, do you, do you lights. Woo -hoo. We used to ride in the back of a truck. Be five years old, back there riding in the back of a truck. First time I ever saw 285 in Atlanta, I was damn hanging on the side of the damn truck. Now you can't do that shit unless you're the low man on a construction totem pole. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, sir. Me and him and him and him. We used to go shopping, go to the store. They didn't have these little lazy ass girl cashiers like they do now. You know, boop, boop, boop. What time are we getting off? I'm not on some time. Boop, boop. We had a beehive hair woman. She worked at every store. I don't know how she did it. She must have had a plane. This woman only talked about food. She was talented. She had a manual cash register. That chicken last week was real good. My sister made some of that shit. This bread's on sale, but it's stale. She loved food. She gave a damn. She'd ring up two big grocery carts full of groceries. And, it, and the total would come out and she'd go, damn, $80? And everybody in the store would drop shit and go, $80? But who bought $80 worth of groceries? And your mama would go, fuck, $80? I guess I'm gonna have to write a check. Because we didn't have debit cards back in those days, sir. Nobody wanted to go to hell very fast in those days. Ooh, I can't wait to get to hell. Ooh, I want the bank to know everything about me. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I've never read the 13th chapter of Revelation. Boop, boop. Where can I put my forehead in my right hand? Boop. Didn't have no credit cards. You might get one from Sears, but you maxed it out on a freezer first thing. You barely ever saw a check. Your mama would pull out a check and that beehive hair woman would panic. And she'd go, Fred, Frank, Fred, Frank, fuck, she's got a check. Fred, Frank, Fred, Frank. And this large man would come running out of the meat department. 
They look kind of like Junior from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They run out and go, who the fuck's got a fucking chick? And everybody goes, Sheena, Sheena. And he'd have chicken blood all over him and he'd run to the office and get a mandatory tie. He put it on and came down to about right here. It was a mandatory tie. It didn't match a pair of pants in the whole state of damn Georgia. And he'd look at your mama and go, give me a damn chick. And she'd go, I'm throwing you ahead to ride it. I just didn't know it was gonna be $80, damn. Thank you. And he never even looked at a driver's license. But he'd pull out a pen and he'd initial it. And suddenly Junior from Texas Chainsaw Massacre was Alan Greenspan all of a sudden. And your mama's check was good as gold. When they two bagged them groceries and take them out to the damn car. You know who did it? A fucker in a backward hat. <laughs> Let's get with the program, sir. We'll get the guitar out. How many of y'all like country music in here at all? Well, if you don't like it, you damn sure better start liking it. It's about the only thing I can play. Gave my roadie the night off. <laughs> Ma'am, could you talk just a little louder? I don't think the mic on the camera is picking it up enough. <laughs> Baby got back. <laughs> Baby got back. Get jiggy with it. Get jiggy with it. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the dogs out? Who, who? Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the damn dogs out? <laughs> Hip hop, put it to country music. Go to Waffle House about two in the morning. <laughs> Throw something in the jukebox, will you? Back that ass up. <laughs> you fine motherfucker here, back that ass up. <laughs> That's the actual lyrics of the song, man. I don't mean to be crude for crude's sake. There's always a I was always a huge Skinnerd fan. All Skinnerd songs in the same. Then they do that fucked up chord. I always love weird chords. This is what I call a soap opera chord. This is when a soap opera is just about to go to commercial. You're not fucking Bill, are you? <laughs> All Stevie Ray Vaughan songs in the same. I'm not a musician. If I was a musician, there'd be a bus outside. I'd be getting laid after the show. <laughs> Comedian. I'll be with, with Muslim man at Denny's later. <laughs> oh, there's a pretty one. <laughs> All Neil Young songs in the same. He always does those sad ass chords because he's Canadian. <laughs> Just wishes he was American. <laughs> All Travis Tritt songs in the same. Hey, yeah, oh girl, yeah, girl. <laughs> Travis will do that on the Star Spangled Banner. You know, the land of the free and the home. See, Travis is just so country. He says, home. <laughs> well, I'm country as a fucking chicken. And I've never ever heard anybody say, home. For the land of the free and the home of the free. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, girl, yeah, girl. <laughs> I just pick it on Travis Tritt, huh? Great singer. Come on back, ma'am. I was playing with Travis. I'm sorry. You're not the Hooter girl he married, are you? <laughs> Bruce Springsteen songs always kind of in the same. Wow! Everybody in New Jersey, we love Bruce Beastie, we love New Jersey. Woo! But every song Bruce ever sang about New Jersey was about how bad it sucked. <laughs> I wanna get the fuck out of New Jersey. These fuckers are killing me here. I wanna take his car, get the fuck out of New Jersey. Yeah! Alrighty. 
play you some stupid shit. As if the other wasn't. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's gay. Jeff Gordon's gay. At least that's what them only Earnhardt fans always say. They swear he's using Vaseline on the 24 Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. He wears rainbow colors. He's a handsome fella standing in victory lane with a gorgeous ex-wife with a check in her hand sipping on gay champagne. And them Earnhardt fans up in the stands choking on bread and spam. Say Gordon's gay every time he turned and hugged Ray Avernham. Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. At least that's what the losers who lose every Sunday always say. He's in the IROC pink Cadillac for Mary Kay, Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. Now he's got about four Winston Cups at home on his trophy shelf. But I bet you he can't pick one up, at least not by himself. And we can't figure out how he can drive so sissy fast. I think the only driver who's gay in the race is the one that comes in last. Yeah. Which is usually Jimmy Spencer. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. He's probably whistling Elton John or Spandau Ballet. He's got the Rainbow Warrior singing YMCA. Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. Thank you very much. I don't want to sit here and pick on gay people. They got enough problems without hillbilly piling on. <laughs> Americans, we're a little bit hypocritical about that. Go to church every Sunday. Do not judge, do not judge. Love the sinner, hate the sin. All sins the same. But f those f <laughs> There ain't a man in this room wouldn't suck a dick under certain circumstances. <laughs> not one. And you see them all swell up in the chair and I warn me, I warn me. You do not realize your priorities in life yet, gentlemen, until you have found what you would gladly suck a dick over. <laughs> have you found yours yet, sir? Do you have children, sir? If somebody put a gun to your child's head, seriously threatening your child, you'd suck every dick on Roswell Road out there to save their life, wouldn't you, sir? You haven't said no yet, sir. <laughs> We're halfway there. <laughs> Just a problem. Of course you would. Why? Because you're a great father, sir. Mediocre dresser, great father. <laughs> now every man in the room, I took a dick. I'm a good father. <laughs> now that sounds right, but it don't feel right, does it, sir? Four minutes ago, if I'd have told you I was gonna talk you into this, you'd have told me I was crazy. <laughs> now, you're going home a hero, sir. <laughs> She's gonna be patting you on the back all the way home. He took a dick to save our children. He's a wonderful father. You're gonna get laid later, sir. You're gonna see my name on that sign out there in about six months. I go, I got laid last time I saw that asshole. And that is my job. You're welcome. Here's a little song about something you won't know about, sir. <laughs> Drive-in movies. I used to pull that top down and get her in the back seat. She was sick from all the Boone's Farm and the corn dog she'd eat. Brand spanking new rubber, I just looped the rear end. The car was making knocking noises at the Joyland Drive-in. Leather seats get sweaty when it's biblical hot. And Pat Benatar keeps screaming, hit me with your best shot. <laughs> and half the cast of Deep Throat knew I loved her so. But that was four cars ago. <laughs> she threw up on the floor mat just before she passed out. And I'd have to stop at the goo-goo and vacuum it out. And we pull up. To her mama's about the time she came to And comedy club won't let me tell you the other stuff we do She's the reason that one seat is ripped and the floorboard's rusted out She got a hold of some of that Spanish fly my cousin bragged about 
She pulled it out the night that movie Porky's came to town. And she's the reason I still bet you that one window won't roll down. <laughs> and that PE coach from Porky's knew that I loved her so. But that was four cars ago. Four cars ago. Just a tad, huh? My daddy was a basketball referee. And he did high school games, he did college games, he did industrial league games. Anytime he ever came home and had stitches in his head, we knew he'd been in a church league game. So. <laughs> Wrote this little song about that. Church league, softball, fist fight, getting washed in the blood on a Tuesday night. What would Jesus do? Lord, he wouldn't do that. Knock hell out of a preacher with the softball bat. <laughs> Well, the swinging shepherds from the sheep of the Savior were tied with the Sourwood Church of Christ, an example of some highly unholy behavior in a game that had already been protested twice. Something unbiblical must have been said for them to be aiming heat at a minister's head. Clocking the clergy ain't the thing to do, but neither's the high hard one on a O and two. <laughs> Church league, softball, fist fight. A bloody laying on a hands neat the left field lights. Knocking out four teeth, getting a busted lip. Ain't exactly my idea of Christian fellowship. Church league, softball, fist fight. Rolling round the pitcher's mound, it just don't look right for nice people from the church and the Sunday school class to trade the cup of brotherhood for a can of whoop ass. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I used to love Elvis. Aloha, Hawaii, 1973. Nobody introduced a band better than Elvis Presley. He walked up, I'd like to take his time to introduce a band. Holy guitar, Mr. James Burton. Our bass is Jerry Shipp. The drummer is Ronnie Tut. Our piano is Mr. Glenn Harden. The lady does a high part, Smith Cathy Westmoreland. And the man that braids with my scars and water. Y'all remember who brought Elvis Presley his scars and water? <coughs> Did somebody knock me in the head and put me on some kind of blooper show or some shit? <laughs> I'm sitting here with three middle-aged fuckers in the front and none of them know who brought Elvis Presley his scars and water. Charlie Hodge. The man that braids my scars and water is Mr. Charlie Hodge. I used to be 11 years old laying on a throw rug going, fuck, I wish I was Charlie Hodge. He used to bring Elvis to scars and water, women screaming, panties flying. Fuck, I wish I was Charlie Hot. You don't really give a damn, do you, sir? Let me explain something to you, sir. You're gonna learn some shit at my show, sir. Larry, the cable guy, don't give a fuck about you, sir. I'm worried sick about you. Get her done, fuck, I got her done. I got her naked and got her pregnant, sir. And that's the problem. <laughs> Larry's trying to make a payment on a Learjet. I'm trying to make a payment on a Lear truck cover. <laughs> I'm gonna start tearing the sleeves out of this shit here pretty soon. Just something to try to get 26 year old man to crack a fucking smile. <laughs> Got married about two months ago. So, thank you. Well, I got a little demarried about six years ago. Which, <laughs> demarried as opposed to divorce. Divorce is when you go away and never see them again. Demarried is when you're still cutting grass, hanging pictures. You know. <laughs> but I finally found the woman who was looking for a beer gutted, gray headed, 44 year old hillbilly ass English major. So, uh, I was actually an English major in college, ma'am. I'm qualified to teach your children grammar. <laughs> That shows you the sick-ass society we're living in, man. <laughs> but me and my sweetie went out to Las Vegas. We was doing this little TV taping out there when the day before we thought, we'd, oh, what the hell, we're getting married. 55 bucks. Best $55 I ever spent. If she divorced me tomorrow, it'd still be the best $55 I ever spent. 
We, we, we went to the, the beautiful Bugsy Siegel Memorial Chapel at the Flamingo over there, which it was real nice. We were standing across the street at the Caesars and we were walking over. I was in my tux and she was in her bride gown and we're walking up the sidewalk and of course two Mexican fuckers handed us stripper flyers. <laughs> That's when you know you're in Vegas, sir. <laughs> Don't ever get married in Vegas. You know, because that commercial, you know, anything that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. <laughs> One of my favorite songwriters of all time was a fellow named Jim Stafford. Did Spiders and Snakes and, and uh, Wildwood Flower. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Come on, baby. Um, how many more borough miles is it to heaven? I guess I'll probably find out. When I'm lying in the arms of the good Lord coffin, I'll have to put the cigarette out. Cause I know that heaven ain't got my brand and there's probably no smoking in the promised land. How many more borough miles is it to heaven? Nobody really knows. The police know how many beers you gotta drink to go. You're not back enough to blow a point four zero. Doctors know the dangers of alcohol, and we're all getting high on cholesterol. But when cigarettes kill me, I guess I'll quit. But heaven ain't the place for a nicotine fit. Maybe they'll have a dip of skull and a place to spit. I'll have my pastor, Philip Morris, check on it. How many Marlboro miles is it to heaven? <coughs> Lying in the arms of the... Thank you so much. I always love the kids with the Vaseline hair, like this guy in the front. Yeah, they, they got it all up in the air and shit. You know. You know, they don't bother them. They got that serious look. What are you looking at? I always had the Gene Simmons from Kiss hair. You know, like, uh, is everybody here from Georgia? How many people here are not from Georgia? Well, no wonder this show sucked. Where you from, ma'am? Pennsylvania. Well, let me explain something to you, ma'am. Have you under, have you kind of got a handle on Southern accents yet? Have you understood a word I've said so far, ma'am? Southern accents are kind of peculiar things, and I guess, I guess Pennsylvania has different accents depending on where you are, but I basically figured out how to explain it. In Georgia, there's South Georgia people that talk like Jimmy Carter. They ain't got no R's in the woods. <laughs> Nothing has an R in it. Everything is like this, and everybody sounds like they could get their ass whipped. <laughs> North Georgia people, it's all R's. Everything got an R in it up there. Put the back tar on your car there. You know, and they don't say y'all in North Georgia, they say yuns. Yuns gonna go over there, put the back tar on the car there. <laughs> South Carolina people kind of talk like Strom Thurmond. They sound like assholes. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of lovely young ladies here in South Carolina. South Carolina people don't ask Strom. I shouldn't pick on Strom, he passed away. But Strom was the only man in the world that could pull out a Susan B. Anthony dollar, look at it and think, yeah, I slept with her. <laughs> he could probably get that Indian woman on a Sacagawea dollar. <laughs> In South Carolina people, now they have Steve Spurrier as the coach there now, which I don't particularly care for him. He always stands around in a lesbian golf hat going. <laughs> we all remember Steve Spurrier. He won the Heisman Trophy when all the black guys were in Vietnam. <laughs> it's okay, ma'am. We're in Georgia. You can pick on Spurrier here. North Carolina people, they all sound like Andy Griffith. Well, Floyd. Wow, oh, he shaved his neck. <laughs> Alabama people open their mouth up real wide when they talk. Y'all you know, going on Friday night or Saturday night? I think I might go on Friday night if y'all want to go Saturday night. Flor Florida is a weird one because when you get south of Gainesville, Florida, you're actually in Michigan again. <laughs> 
I mean, I always thought the Florida tag was blue. You know what I'm saying? But everybody in the, in the southern part of Florida, which is, of course, the northern part of Florida, they all sound like Ronnie Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner. Kind of got the pothead feel, you know? You're all right, man, y'all gonna have a good time out there in Panama City, all right? All right, be sure and take 231 till you get to dosing and everything. Y'all have a good time. That's how they talk down there. Bobby Bowden's down there, Tallahassee, who's my favorite coach. Not because he's a great winner, because he's a tremendous loser. Bobby Bowden could, could walk off of a national championship game lost by two points. And they go, Coach, you sucked out there today. And he'd go, we did, we did. But we got good kids. And my quarterback couldn't keep nothing on his stomach. He was nauseated that third quarter. We had to run him in the bathroom in there. He came back out. I thought he played a pretty good ball game. He his stomach was messed up. He hangs with his people. You know what I'm saying? Coach, your team just stole shirts out of Dillard's. They did. They did. But one of them was trying to get his mama something for Christmas. And they didn't realize they were in the men's department. They thought they was in the ladies' department. You know, and you gotta let kid make a mistake every once in a while. He's a good kid. Hey, he's going to play pro ball. He don't need the money. He didn't mean to steal it. He's a good person. That's why you love Bobby Bell. Now, what others say? We got Mississippi. See, Mississippi always has a stutter. Everybody from Mississippi. Elvis had a, I, I don't know, man. I, I just can't quite, I never could quite get it out. Or Jimmy Swagger was the same way. I'll tell you this. I don't really know exactly what happened at that little motel in Metairie. Yeah. You gotta get the stutter thing. I ain't picking on Swagger, he'll be the second man in heaven. Charles Stanley's going first. God bless Charles Stanley. Best preacher I ever saw in my life. Arkansas, of course, they talk like Bill Clinton. They tell like they want to start laughing and crying at the same time. Like that. They stick their teeth out and go, it's good to have you in Arkansas. You can always tell you're in Arkansas because there's gravel hitting your car when you're driving down the interstate there. That's when you've hit Johnny Cash country. Texas, everybody wishes they sounded like Sam Elliott because he's from Texas. Yeah. Sam Elliott's got that voice that all women love. That old roll like him. Yeah. And he used a lot of Mexican words. It's like he goes to a Mexican restaurant and reads the menu. You know. How about your amigo, compadre? A lot of that shit. I have a friend of mine, my, one of my best friends in the world, his name is Dwayne Campbell. He lives in Eastern Kentucky. And he says, he, I used to do these radio, these tire commercials on the radio in Kentucky. And he'd say, how's your tar commercial going? And I'd go, Dwayne, it's a tire. He'd go, not out in Eastern Kentucky, it's a tar. And I'd say, Dwayne, T-I-R-E is a tar? He'd go, yes. I'd say, what is a T-O-W-E-R? He said, a tire. <laughs> I went, so why don't you swap those two and make tower tar? Well, it just wouldn't be right. <laughs> you know, in theory, he cuts his grass with a pyre mire. <laughs> oh, Virginia, we left them out. Pat Robertson's from Virginia, and he says, Sue. He just loves being in this suit. <laughs> says, Hughes. That's a nice Hughes. <laughs> War Button from, from South Virginia. War Button is one of the greatest voices in the history of NASCAR. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, any requests? David Allen Coe. David Allen Coe? <laughs> sir, I'm going to sing songs I wrote, sir. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, sir. I'm on Capitol Records, sir. They had the Beatles, they had the Beach Boys, they had Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, sir. And now they have a fucker who slept in a rest area Tuesday. <laughs> so basically, David Allen Coe can kiss my ass, sir. Play a little football song. Ricky Tidwell was a great athlete. Was a big strong boy that was quick on his feet And every college in the country wanted Ricky on their line 
Oh, when the scouts come knocking on Ricky's door, they didn't want to talk to young Rick no more. When they saw his mama, she's the one they wanted to sign. <laughs> She was a raw boned woman raised on a farm, had bare bright tattooed on her forearm. She is meaner than hell and run the 40 and 4.3. And she could squat 600, bench press five, the hands down meanest homemaker alive. Got a scholarship playing linebacker in the SEC. <laughs> Ricky Tidwell's mama's gonna play football. Her real name's Doris, but they gonna call her too tall. She got shoulders and a hind end four foot wide. Gone to college on a full ride. <laughs> Doris Tidwell's gonna play in the NCAA. <laughs> She'd wash all her teammates' uniforms, tucked everybody in in the football dorm, cooked the game meal, said the Lord's Prayer. You're missing a jock strap, she's got a spare. Crawl in the huddle and call all the plays. Only one tough enough to go both ways. Get a mouth full of mud, scarred up knees, cussing out the coaches, spitting on referees. Ricky Tidwell's mama's gonna play football. Her real name's Doris, everybody calls her too tall. They say she's a fine young man, but she's really not. Ricky's mama was the master of the cheap shot. And on a triple option play, she could ruin your day. She led the team in tackles in the league and sacks, responsible for killing nine quarterbacks. But the school's reputation was destroyed. They accused Ricky's mama of steroids. Uh-oh, Ricky Tidwell's mama's on probation. And Alabama is under their 89th investigation. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't leave poor Ricky Tidwell's mama alone. She'd been taking male hormones. Doris Tidwell's gonna be hell in the NFL. <laughs> Ricky Tidwell's mama. <laughs> Thank you, football fans. Alrighty, we'll play you one more here. Uh, one of my favorite uh, songwriters in the booty song? Yeah! Well, I appreciate you asking for that. I don't have the track that goes with that, sir. It's kind of hard to play it on acoustic guitar. Look at that booty, show me the booty, give me the booty, I want the booty, back up the booty, I need the booty, I like the booty, lower the booty, bring on the booty, give up the booty, loving the booty, round booty, down for the booty, I want the booty, hunting the booty, chasing the booty, chasing the booty, getting the booty, beautiful booty, smoking booty, talk to the booty, more booty, fine booty. Ba, 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 ba. All about the booty, big old booty, serious booty, amazing booty. I take the booty, where's the booty? Stare at the booty, walk in the booty, touching the booty, who's got the booty? Grabbing the booty, loving the booty, hugging the booty, kissing the booty, holding the booty, hugging the booty. I already said that one. I know this one, kicking the booty. That's about all I remember, sir. Here's a little song for the Baptists. Well, the church burned down and no one knew what Pentecost Baptist was gonna do. The brimstone got so that gum hot it burned up a church bus in the parking lot. In a panic, the Reverend Dr. White called up an ex-member that hadn't lived right. He owned Joe's beer joint right across the fence. It's the same Joe's he'd preached against. He said, I don't really want to be a hypocrite. I got a Sunday school class that's about to shut. We're all excited about revival week. Been moved by the spirit, so to speak. With all the souls we saved and money we spent, we thought God told us to sell that tent. I got a famous evangelist supposed to come. I've run out of chairs. Will you loan us some? Joe said, well, you can just use a whole dang place. Ain't nine on the jukebox, amazing grace. I ain't supposed to be open because of them blue laws. We'll open the night if it's all right with y'all. Preacher says, well, I reckon it'd be okay. The good Lord works in mysterious ways. It's gonna talk about Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. I reckon I could do it from the DJ booth. At the First Baptist Bar and Grill It's the only church in the Bible Belt That smells like a whiskey still When the sinners finish one more round We'll have dinner on the ground And go inside and pray we don't get killed The evangelists came with a well-dressed choir They showed up around happy hour Looked around the joint and didn't take it real well Said the white ministry has gone to hell Miss Mills had taught youth Sunday school and two Dickens in the back room shooting pool were sharing the Lord with a Jim Beam rep, teaching Miss Mills some line dance steps. 
Reverend White was reading from the book of Luke to a tall drunk trucker about to puke, had John 316 memorized, trying to dry him out to get him baptized. The evangelist yelled about the lights and the beer, said, White, you can't save any souls in here. This place ain't nothing but a den of sin. Ain't the kind of place Baptist ought to be in. Preacher says, well, we don't really need y'all here. You didn't do a very good job last year. You only saved one sinner. That's Todd McGuire. He's a little son bet set my church on fire. <laughs> Now what he's doing now, we don't really know, but he's got his hat on backwards and he's sitting in the sixth row and he acts like he knows a lot about David Allen Coe. At the First Baptist Bar and Grill, it's the only church in the Bible Belt that smells like a whiskey still. Not a stained glass window anywhere in sight, just a blood-stained floor and neon lights and a communion wine and here's always chill. Now we're here every Sunday, we're living large, the only church with a cover charge. And if you don't like our doctrine and think we ain't devout, we'll have our three gray-headed ass bouncers throw your ass out <laughs> of the First Baptist Bar and Grill. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Thank you. credit time It's closing credit time It's closing credit time Sounds like my last car loan No, it's closing credit time Closing credit time It's closing credit time is it still closing credit time? Don't get up and leave yet. It's closing credit time. These are the producers and directors and cameramen and the damn light man who about burnt me up the whole show and all the people that we see behind the scenes. Those first few names you saw, those are the people who will probably be making more money than me on this DVD. It's close and credit time. Oh. Ha, 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 ha.